Hello folks and thanks for joining me again. It's Matthew Grace here and uh, today I want to share with you uh, a bit of a story. I want to thank you all first, firstly for uh, all the support that I get. I really appreciate that. Any comments or questions you have on any of my videos or any of the work that I do here, I look forward to getting it. So I want to start today off by uh, reminding you of Plato's Allegory of the Cave. I don't know if you're familiar with this story, so I'll just share it with you. The setup is, it's a discussion between Socrates and Glaucon in the Republic. And Socrates is explaining how there are prisoners who are set up in a cave. They've never seen outside. They've never been outside. They live in a dark cave and behind them is a fire. And between the fire and their heads, there are people who you might call puppeteers who are putting on shadows and um, figures on the wall. And the prisoner's reality is what they see on the wall. They see nothing else. They have chains around their necks. They're unable to turn around and they're un unable to see what's happening. So their entire reality is what is up on the wall. Now, this is the situation that humanity is in right now. And it's very grave right now. And I see our country slipping away. I see the world slipping away because instead of a wall uh, that us prisoners are watching, us prisoners are watching the news. We're reading newspapers and we're believing what we hear without ever questioning what's going on, without being able to turn our heads around and see what's happening. And it's creating a very frightful situation. As I've said in many of my videos previous to this, there are people that are looking to control, control the population, control you, and keep you in fear, and keep you sick, and keep you mentally disturbed and off-center. And they're very, very good at it. Now imagine if one of these prisoners decided that they were going to escape, and they escaped the cave. What would that be like? Well, at first, it would be very painful to their eyes because they would see the sunshine. The sun would hit them with a glare and they probably would be blinded by what they see. A totally different reality. And they might just run back into the cave and say, don't go out there. It's painful. You don't want to go out there. Let me get my chains back on and let me look at the wall. That's very comfortable. This is the situation we're in right now. Now imagine if one of these slaves was brave enough to walk a good distance away from the cave, no matter what the pain was, no matter how uncomfortable it was, they were able to distance themselves from their old reality which was what wasn't reality at all, it was shadows on the wall. So imagine if they were able to distance themselves. And all of a sudden their eyes started to adjust to this sunlight that they had never seen before. Imagine if their feet started to get used to walking on the grass. And all of a sudden they heard birds sing and they saw animals. And they had discussions with human beings. And at night they saw the stars and they saw sunsets, and they saw beautiful rivers, and waters, and mountain, water, and mountains. Imagine, they tasted new foods, and they realized, oh my goodness, my previous life in the cave, watching the shadows, was a disaster. It was extremely unfulfilling, and there was very little possibility for me. And imagine that individual the excitement he would feel. Well, that's essentially how I feel when it comes to health and when it comes to matters of the world. I have strayed far away 
from my formal education and from what I have learned growing up. And it's really wonderful. It's really wonderful to be responsible for my health. It's really wonderful to understand the things that I understand because I've spent the time to distance myself from false reality. And anybody who does that, their life improves dramatically. So now let's think about this individual and his excitement. And he comes back to the cave and he wants to tell his other prisoner friends about this experience, about this incredibly different world that is so filled with opportunity and beauty and freedom. What do you think they would say? to him, how many, of you, how many of them would say, hey, let me go with you? And how many of them would say, leave me alone? You sound crazy. You sound like a nut. I have been called crazy. I have been called a nut many, many times. Yet, I live in a different reality and I'm much more free. I have no fear of catching disease. I have no fear of disease at all. And on those rare times where I don't feel well, I simply know I need to rest, maybe drink a little juice, and I'm fine. Imagine what it would be like to know this for yourself. And I'm here to tell you that you can understand these ideas and you could live free from the fear of disease, you and your family. I wrote this book called A Way Out, Disease, Deception, and the Truth About Health that describes precisely how to do this. I didn't make up any new idea. I didn't, I'm not selling any powders or any pills or any drugs. I'm simply telling you to abide by your natural laws and feed yourself according to the way we were intended to feed ourselves. And if you're interested, that book is available on Amazon and uh, Walmart and Barnes and Nobles, I believe. Anyway, I'm not here to sell my book, although you would benefit greatly from it. But I'm here to share with you this allegory of the cave and to discuss what's happening right now. So here we are. We're in this incredible predicament. And I don't know how many people realize what's happening, but we are losing our country. We are losing our freedoms. We are losing our Constitution, which is the greatest document ever written to rule a country. Okay? Are you tired of the fear? Are you tired of the masks? Are you tired of the politicians destroying your life? I am. I want you to stop being afraid, and the only way to not be afraid is to gain understanding. I'm really disappointed in humanity right now, yet I stay encouraged that an awakening can occur. It must occur. I will do all I can to set you free, but you have to take responsibility for the things you believe and take as fact. You have to be able to decipher who is lying to you and who is trying to control you, to gain dominion over you and your family. The amount of lies and misinformation we have been told and the sickening effect it has had on our world, our country, and our day-to-day -day lives is beyond belief. And now it is increasing at a rapid pace. For decades, I've studied the people who aim to gain control over you, who steal your money, steal your labor, steal your God-given freedoms, knowingly poison your water supply, keep you dumb and misinformed, inject you with poisons, and create untold miseries for our population. As I said, things have really turned up now. The lies, the propaganda, and the incessant fight to keep you afraid and obedient is coming to a crescendo. There is a way out. Right now, all the media is blasting us with right now is how many cases there are. Oh, there's 80 more thousand today. There's 70 more thousand today. Listen closely. Cases don't matter. If your newscasters all told you tomorrow that all 330 million Americans tested positive, what does that mean? Well, you might think it was the end of the world, right? 
If the recovery rate was 50%, that would mean the death rate would be 50%. That would be a cataclysmic event worthy of this dystopian, this dystopian present-day panic. The frightful newscasts, the lockdowns, the frightened masses cowering behind closed doors, the fear of each other, the cancellation of all events where people gather, the destruction of our religious gatherings, the destruction of family-owned small businesses, the power-hungry politicians who frighten and punish those who elected them, the general sadness and the theft of our beloved freedoms. It may all be warranted with a 50% 50, 50 death rate or a 50% recovery rate. If the recovery rate was 75%, it still would be a human tragedy as 25% of the populace would die from this, quote, new disease. If the recovery rate was 85%, you might start to think, that's not great, but not so bad. Only 15% die from this. My chances are pretty good. If the recovery from this virus went all the way up to 95%, you might be skipping down the street with your maskless family on your way to an indoor concert with no care in the world. 5% chance of dying, that's nothing. What would you say if the recovery rate went up to 99%? Then you would be, well, that would be fearless. It would essentially be over. Only 1% of the people who get COVID would die from it. Well, guess what? The recovery rate right now in the United States, according to the Centers for Disease Control, is 99%. That should be the end of the pandemic. How come you're not hearing that on your news? How come not, you're not hearing the fact that the Centers for De Disease Control released a statement two months ago saying only 9,000 people died of only COVID. The rest of the 200,000 had other complications. How come you're not hearing this news? Shadows on the wall, folks. Don't be afraid of the shadows on the wall. Break free of the chains and find out for yourself. Right now, the recovery rate is 99%, and it's climbing every day. Every day it's climbing because the case rate goes up. As the case rate goes up, the recovery rate goes down. I want you to understand that we've never tested for any dis-ease like we're testing for now. I also want you to know that the tests that we're given right now, I've talked about it many times in my other videos, they do not work. They are completely and utterly useless and inaccurate, okay? The, C the FDA, up until a month ago, had not authorized any test for regular use. They only authorized tests for emergency use. Interesting fact. So you have a 99% recovery rate. The CDC data shows high virus survival rates. I'm reading from a headline, 99% plus. Governor Ron DeSantis tweeted about the update saying people in the age groups of 0 to 19 have a 99.997 chance of survival if they contract the virus. Age group 20 to 49, 99.98% chance. 50 to 69, 99.5% and 70 years older and above have a 94.6% chance of survival. Well, 70 and above in this country means that you're probably taking at least two or three pharmaceutical dr drugs. You probably have a heart condition. You're probably in very poor shape from a poor diet. And your chances of recovery without the virus are probably 94%. Um, the, death, the fact is the death rate from coronavirus is dropping like a rock in water and the so-called killer disease now has a death rate lower than a lot of flu seasons. So in order to keep up the panic and the lockdowns, what is to be done? You change the subject. Do not talk about how deadly it is anymore. Talk about how many cases there are. A constant moving back of the goalposts. Remember, when we were all promised, all we had to do was flatten the curve and make sure hospitals were not overwhelmed, then we could end the lockdowns. Well, that happened months ago. We flattened the curve like a pancake. And now they're telling us, oh, we have to wait for the vac we have to wait for the vaccine, right? Excuse me. Anyway, uh, 
in order to keep up to keep the panic and the lockdowns yeah you have to change the subject because otherwise nobody's seen people die in the streets the death rate staying the same and I'm going to talk about that right now okay people are dying is the knee-jerk response from most of the most of the sheep people are how can you say that it's nothing people are dying well people die every day and unfortunately most people are completely unaware of how many people die every day in this country before COVID ever existed that number is 7,800 a day there are 7,800 deaths a day that's pre-COVID in one week, that's 54,600. In one month, that's 218,499 dead. After 11 months, it comes to 2,402,000. If you want to prorate that out to a year, it's 2.6 million in a year. Well, as I said back in March, I don't think the death rate is going to change one bit, despite what they say about this world pandemic. Well, in the United States, the death rate has stayed the same. Uh, I looked at all of the numbers Centers for Disease Control put out for deaths for the months of January through August, and I prorated the rest of them, and this is what I came up with. And as you can see, the death rate has not increased. Now, if you're telling me that we have a mass pandemic, how is it possible that the death rate is the same? And what they're simply doing is they stop counting flu deaths as flu deaths. They stop counting uh, heart disease as heart disease deaths. They stop counting pneumonia deaths as pneumonia deaths. And they just put them all into the COVID pile. And I've covered that in past videos and showed you specifically how they did it and how doctors testified to the fact that they were being coached to put down any death as COVID. So... Uh, here we have a disease where there are no new symptoms. It's supposedly a new disease. Uh, and the only new symptom that you will ever see in the future uh, are those caused by, caused by highly toxic poisons. And poisoning the populace, I believe, is right around the corner if people aren't uh, controlled enough. So be wary of that. Right now, the symptoms are flu symptoms. They're no different, no matter what they tell you. It's all bizarre. We've been told that this virus is spreading and it's highly infectious. Most human beings don't understand the nature of a virus, and I want to talk to you simply about that real quick. A virus is not a living organism. A virus doesn't ingest anything. A virus doesn't leave any waste. A virus doesn't propel itself. A virus doesn't reproduce on its own. It has no digestive system. It has no nervous system. A virus cannot act. By definition, it is inanimate. It cannot take over a cell. It cannot invade. It cannot lie dormant, like many physicians say it can. It cannot hide out. There's no latency period with a virus. It doesn't do anything. It's simply a piece of cellular debris. Inside each cell, there are 30,000 organelles called mitochondria. Inside each mitochondria, there's a lipid protein shell. And when a cell dies, the cell is broken down by a body enzyme. And what you have is a, these shells with RNA or DNA inside of them that are in different stages of being broken down. That's what they call viruses. There are 380 trillion viruses in our body. So here's the question I have. If this virus has never been tested for before, how do you know, how can anyone, how can any doctor or any expert say that this virus has not been in human beings since the beginning of human beings? In other words, we could have been living with this virus since human beings have existed. Nobody can explain uh, why that's not a possibility, because it is a possibility. First of all, the tests don't work at all, but just let's say they do work. You're testing for a virus that you've never tested before. How do you know the populace hasn't always had this? And that's a question I want you to answer. And you to figure out. And if you have an answer, I'd love to hear what it is. 
So there are 380 trillion viruses that live in the body. And they're claiming that this one virus, this SARS-CoV-2, that's a member of coronaviruses that have been around and identified since the mid-1960s that cause common colds, they say that this is a killer, deadly virus, despite the fact that there's no evidence and there's not one scientific paper. Listen to this. Not one scientific paper that shows that SARS-CoV-2 causes any disease, let alone death. That paper does not exist. I've called Centers for Disease Control many times, at least 10 times now. I've asked them to email it to me. I record the conversations. I never get anything, and they don't have it on file. You'd think that would be the first thing that would come up, a study that shows that SARS-CoV-2 is a deadly disease. There is no such thing as a peer-reviewed paper, scientific paper done on that. It doesn't exist. If you find it, I'd like to see it. Here's another strange question I might have. You might, We've been told that this virus comes from bats. And the obvious question I have is, where are all the dead bats? Uh, spare me. I can hear the flood of lofty objections from the highly educated medical men and professors of learned institutions and those geniuses that read the New York Times every day, scoffing at such a pedantic and ridiculous question from a mere peasant who doesn't understand the complications, variations, and manifestations of disease like they do. I can hear it. I can hear it right now. Is that a good question? If this disease came from bats, why aren't bats dying? If little tiny mouse with wings isn't killed by a virus, but a human being is. That sounds a little strange to me. It sounds a little odd. Uh, what I do understand, by the way, is how to create health and how to live a disease-free life. Okay, And I do understand that the shadows on the wall that I watched as a kid are just that. They're shadows on the wall. They're not reality. And what you're living right now is not reality. It's fake. It's induced fear and propaganda to control you. And I'm here to tell you to question everything that you're being told. Question what I'm saying, but find out for yourself, okay? Uh, modern medicine, in their arrogance and profane confidence in pseudoscience and massive profits, has convinced the world and themselves that a human cell, one of the most miraculous and incomprehensible microorganisms in existence, will actually aid in its supposed arch enemy and help it reproduce that enemy to inflict great damage and sometimes death, not only upon the cell, but the whole body. Think about this. The theory, and you could read this again, you could check up on this, in, in the modern medical world is that a virus, quote, injects itself. Remember, a virus can't do anything. It can't inject. It can't do anything. It's dead. It has no nervous system. It injects itself into a cell and then commands. Those are two verbs that don't relate. It can't inject. It can't command. Anyway, it commands the cell to reproduce more viruses. And the, the cell thus explodes. And all those thousands of viruses go to other cells and infect them. Well, you would have uh, an exponential disaster on your hands real quick if that was the case and the human body if viruses were deadly in fact you would be dead in a few minutes if you had that going on with 75 trillion cells in our body imagine that exponential effect it would be over very 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 quickly so saying that a cell would create its arch enemy and help to induce the replication of its arch enemy is absurd. It's like saying an antelope would produce a lion, like a mouse would produce a cat. It's absurd, yet you believe it because at one time or right now, you are a prisoner. With the chain around your neck, you are unable to move, and what you are looking at are shadows on the wall. Okay? So, I'm going to end this video here. It's going to be the shortest video I've done ever. <laughs> Again, I'd like to hear your comments, and I'd like to finish with a couple of conclusions. First of all, you should know that the tests do not work. PCR testing 
uh, is not made to diagnose disease. The man who invented PCR testing is quoted as saying that. I met him, Carrie Mullis, and he told me the very same thing. This is not meant to diagnose whether you have a virus or whether you don't. Nobody knows if they are COVID positive. Nobody. The tests don't work. There is no evidence, zero evidence, that the virus is spreading. The death rate is ridiculously low and getting lower and lower. So the recovery rate is, is nearing 100%. Why all the panic? Why isn't the media telling you that 99% of the people who have this disease get better? Why aren't they saying that? Hmm. All of this is about control and an upcoming mass vaccination program and the eventual depopulation of the world. The media hysteria about cases is a horrible, disingenuous fear tactic that will harm more people than any virus ever will. Don't buy it. Get yourself out of the cave, okay? Remove yourself for the sake of your family, for the sake of yourselves, and for the sake of our country. We don't have a lot of time left, okay? Anything that I'm saying here that you might think is untrue, I'd like to see your comment. Anything that I said that might, that might have, uh, that you might think is deceptive, I'd like to know. I'm telling you what I know to be the truth, and I've made great efforts in my life to free myself from the madness, to get out of the cave. I want you to be out of the cave, too. Thank you all for joining me. I'm Matthew Grace. Remember, healthy acts always produce health. And remember that our Constitution is the greatest document ever written to rule over a country, and that if we don't protect our Constitution, if we don't protect our freedoms, if we succumb to this socialism, democratic socialism, whatever they want to call it, that's it. I don't think the world's coming back. So we need to fight. We can do it, okay? I'm counting on you. See you soon.